Day 532 of the Trump administration, and EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt joins the list of high-profile departures from the White House. Hours ago, Pruitt sent his resignation letter to the president as he faced the growing fallout from a whole bunch of ethics scandals. They include spending taxpayer money on a $43,000 soundproof, uh, soundproof phone booth, a sweetheart deal on a condo rental linked to a lobbyist, and ordering aides to help him obtain a used mattress from Trump's hotel in Washington. Right now, Pruitt is the subject of 15 ongoing federal investigations. Earlier today, in a, a tweet, President Trump announced that he had accepted Pruitt's resignation. He wrote, quote, within the agency, Scott has done an outstanding job, and I will always be thankful to him for this. The president goes on to write, the Senate confirmed deputy to EPA, Andrew Wheeler, will on Monday assume duties as the acting administrator of the EPA. In his own resignation letter, Pruitt praised President Trump and the EPA's work. He refers to improved environmental outcomes and historic regulatory reform. And he goes on to say, it is extremely difficult for me to cease serving you in this role, first because... I count it as a blessing to be serving you in any capacity, but also because of the transformative work that is occurring. However, the unrelenting attacks on me personally, my family, are unprecedented and have taken a sizable toll on all of us. Earlier today, as President Trump was traveling to a rally in Montana aboard Air Force One, he told reporters there was, quote, no final straw, end quote, when it came to Pruitt's resignation. He said it was Pruitt's decision to step down. But the New York Times reports, quote, on Thursday afternoon around 1.30, Mr. Trump's chief of staff, John F. Kelly, reached out to Mr. Pruitt to tell him the time had come. The president also told reporters that he's narrowed his possible Supreme Court picks to about four people. A source familiar with the selection process told NBC News the list is actually down to three. These three, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and Raymond Kethledge. And at tonight's rally in Great Falls, the president was teasing up his big reveal. As you know, there's now a vacancy on the Supreme Court. And if you turn in Monday at 9 o'clock, I think you're going to be extremely happy with the selection, right? And they're all great. They're all great. Now, from there, you could say things went off the rails. Among many other things, the president went after Maxine Waters, Elizabeth Warren, and the NFL. We turned away thousands of people. They never say I'm a great speaker. Why the hell do so many people come? I have broken more Elton John records. He seems to have a lot of records. And we beat, and I, by the way, I don't have a musical instrument. I don't have a guitar or an organ. No organ. Elton has an organ. Yes, she is a low IQ individual, Maxine Waters. I said it the other day. Hi. I mean, honestly, she's somewhere in the mid-60s, I believe. That. Pocahontas, they always want me to apologize for saying it. And I hereby, oh no, I want to apologize, I'll use tonight. Pocahontas, I apologize to you. I apologize. To you, I apologize. To the, to the fake Pocahontas, I won't. Yes, we are already building the wall. It started in California and San Diego. I've directed the Pentagon to begin a process of creating a sixth branch of the United States Armed Forces called the Space Force. Hey, how about the NFL? Look, I, I don't want to cause controversy. They passed this stupid thing. You don't have to do this anymore. If you don't respect the flag or if you don't like the country or whatever it is, just go into the locker room. Just go into the locker I think in many respects, that's worse. Isn't that worse than not standing? Let's bring in our leadoff panel for a Thursday night. Peter Baker, Chief White House Correspondent for The New York Times and an MS MSNBC political analyst. Annie Carney is the White House reporter for Politico. And Kimberly Atkins, Chief Washington reporter for The Boston Herald and an MSNBC contributor. Annie, uh, the border wall is not being built. We've already fact-checked that. The, the racial slur, uh, the Pocahontas thing continues. Uh, the U.S. is a signatory to an international agreement not to militarize space. But I don't know that this is picked up yet. Uh, you know, I haven't seen enough traction around this, but the president criticized the Me Too movement in his criticism of Elizabeth Warren. These rallies tend to go off the rails. This one was spectacular. It's surprising to hear him bring up the Me Too movement 
Trump, the president, doesn't have a lot of holding himself back, and it's not a subject that is helpful to him, given that there are more than half a dozen women who have accused him of sexual misconduct and more. Um, so to hear him bring up that subject when he is part of it uh, was a surprising turn. The attacks on Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren's team was probably loving it. I think the Democrats are all, like, waiting for their turn to be Trump's uh, right. pinata that day. And the attacks on the NFL, we the White House officials have explained that this is his 2020 strategy and his midterm strategy to run on culture wars. That part of it uh, was kind of the Trump playbook. Play, um, but the, the bring up Me Too, especially in the same day that they officially announced that Bill Shine will be a deputy chief of staff and the communications director. This is a former Fox executive who was involved with cover-ups for Roger Ailes, um, was a surprising, was probably the most eyebrow-raising moment in that And by rally. the way, he brought it up in connection to uh, the conversation about Pocahontas and Elizabeth Warren. Let's just play that for our viewers. Let's say I'm debating Pocahontas, right? I promise you I'll do this. I will take, you know those little kits they sell on television for $2? Learn your heritage. Guy says, I was born in Scotland. It turns out he was born in Puerto Rico, and that's okay. It's good. You know. Guy says, I was born in Germany. Well, he wasn't born in Germany. He was born someplace else. I'm going to get one of those little kits. And in the middle of the debate, when she proclaims that she's of Indian heritage, because her mother said she has high cheekbones. That's her only evidence, that her mother said she had high cheekbones. We will take that little kit and say, but we have to do it gently. Because we're in the Me Too generation, so we have to be very gentle. And we will very gently take that kit and we will slowly toss it, hoping it doesn't hit her and injure her arm even though it only weighs probably two ounces. And we will say, I will give you a million dollars to your favorite charity, paid for by Trump, if you take the test and it shows you're an Indian. Peter Baker uh, does not uh, sound like a guy who's all uh, bent out of shape about losing a cabinet secretary today, but uh, he did. Uh, there was a resignation or an invitation to uh, submit a letter of resignation from Scott Pruitt uh, earlier today. What's your reporting on how that went down and particularly what John Kelly's role was in it? Yeah, look, John Kelly has been uh, ready to get rid of Scott Pruitt for quite a while. His own uh, tenure in the White House, John Kelly's tenure in the White House seems to be uh, uh, short. We don't seem to be expecting him to be lasting much longer, but on the way out, he wanted to make sure that uh, Pruitt went first. I think he was offended by the uh, various scandals, uh, the, the use of uh, government resources for his personal gain, for his family's gain, I, you know, offended a career Marine general who had basically uh, uh, spent a, a, a decades in the service of his country. And I think that uh, if he was going to do one thing before he left the White House, he was going to, to make sure the president uh, Accept the resignation of Scott Pruitt, but you know it's interesting to hear the president at these rallies. You know this is a, this is not a president speaking so much as a television entertainer. He he, he knows his audience. He he loves nothing more than a good provocative uh, line or a series of lines. This thing with Elizabeth Warren has been an obsession for him for quite a long time. A certain irony there, of course, because he once claimed or his own family claimed to be from Sweden when in fact they were actually from Germany. Mm. But uh, you know this is a regular trope of his. He he, he gets good reaction from. His crowd. He likes to, to poke and to prod and to, and to generate some sort of a, a reaction on the part of the Democrats. Kimberly, it's kind of hard to imagine we're a few days away from the president nominating a Supreme Court uh, pick uh, with all the, the, the noise swirling around it. Uh, but the president uh, announced here that his announcement will be made at 9 o'clock on Monday. We don't know whether that's 9 a.m. or p.m. Uh, I'm assuming 9 a.m., but he says he's going to make this pick on Monday. We're reporting uh, that it is down to three uh, nominees, three potential uh, candidates, Kavanaugh, uh, Barrett, and Kethledge. Um, what's your thought on where this is going? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I do believe that the president met in the evening. I think he wants to build it up as a prime time uh, special, the same way that he rolled out the nomination of Neil Gorsuch, his first Supreme Court pick. But yes, I mean, it it's, it's, wouldn't be a mistake to say this is probably one of the most consequential things that this president can do uh, in, in his term, uh, is nominate another conservative to the U.S. Supreme Court, which is what's going to happen uh, on Monday. Day, regardless of the three finalists that he picks, it uh, seems to me I'm told that uh, Brett Kavanaugh, who is a D.C. Uh, Circuit Court of Appeals judge, is at the top of this list because the president simply likes him. Uh, he has a good feel for him. You know, the president uh, had, likes to uh, trust his own gut and people who he likes uh, in making this pick. Of course, he's selecting from a carefully honed list of people uh, put together by the uh, Federalist Society and the Heritage Foundation. Uh, uh, conservatives that he knew that the evangelicals and the other uh, conservative Republicans would love. So it's not a big uh, stretch between them, uh, but somebody who he seems to like. Uh, but yes, you're right. This is this, this is the time that the president should be talking about this and only this, uh, rather than going to where he seems to be going tonight with the attacks on Elizabeth Warren and others, especially given the fact that in the midterms and beyond in 2020, the president and the Republicans are going to need uh, are going to need support suburban women. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the two big things that we have, you see him attack several women today in his speech. You see him uh, make fun of the Me Too movement. And there is a lot of concern that whomever he appoints to the U.S. Supreme Court might uh, be willing to overturn Roe v. Wade. These are all things that seems to be politically against the president at this time. But in all these cases, he's doubling down and he thinks he has the right strategy. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.